Now, an alien invasion, could it really happen? The U.S. military is making plans just in case. What are the official plans for contact with extraterrestrials? Will they come in peace or war? And what can humanity do in the face of alien invasion? Yes, it is best to be prepared for anything, and Professor Paul Springer from the U.S. Air Command and Staff College would advise the military in the event of an invasion. Uh, he had to get special government clearance to talk to us, and I spoke to him earlier. Paul, it's an incredibly difficult thing, isn't it, to plan to fight back against an enemy we would know absolutely nothing about. Well, that's absolutely true, but at the same time, we make all kinds of contingency and war plans against enemies that we never expected to face in combat. And so the idea that maybe the enemy will have something technological or doctrinal that we've never foreseen is something that we try to plan for any way that we can. Well, obviously, if we did get invaded, these aliens would be much more technologically advanced than we are because we didn't even know they were there. Um, how would you go about fighting an enemy that was just so infinitely superior in technology? Well, you, the first thing you'd want to try to do is, is preserve your forces as best you could. Uh, you would want to learn as much about the enemy as possible, and that would mean things like trying to find vulnerabilities, trying to capture technology. Uh, but survival is your, your first priority, because if you send all of your forces into the field and have them destroyed by that superior enemy force, then when you do find a vulnerability, you won't have any opportunity to exploit it. What do you think would be the alien plan? What would they do first? That really depends on why they're here in the first place. If they're here for the extraction of a specific resource, for example, they might want to just eliminate any resistance that might block them from their objective. If, on the other hand, their goal was actual occupation and conquest, then they would probably have to prioritize anything that they perceive to be a threat to their own dominance. And so that would probably start by wiping out as many communications networks as possible and eliminating as many weapons as might represent some form of threat either to them or to the resources that they're trying to extract. So they might very well want to counter every nuclear weapon, not because it represented a threat to them, but because it might destroy whatever they're here to collect. Is this something, this kind of planning, that governments around the world do consider? It is. In the same way that governments do plan for, for any future potential calamities or conflicts, this is the type of thing that, because it's neutral, uh, you're not provoking a fight or assuming a fight with a country that you might want to maintain a good diplomatic relationship with, if you, if you insert alien in place of some human civilization that you might come into conflict with, uh, then you're, you're far less likely to create any kind of a diplomatic problem. Wouldn't it be a strange situation if humanity had to band together if we were fighting alongside, um, I guess, Russia or the Taliban? It, it would, but keep in mind that many of the greatest civilizations in human history have been formed basically to counter a common enemy. And you look at some of the great world powers of the, the, the globe today, and you find a lot of them formed because of the fear of a common enemy. Uh, take, for example, the United States, where you had 13 colonies, each of which pursued its own interests and its own goals, until they had to band together to try to win their independence collectively from the British. You make some very good points, and we're lucky to have you, uh, should the worst arise. Thank you very much. Thank you.